everybody, I'm Dr. Todd, and today is the first episode of the Miller Method. And today, we are going to be talking about weight loss and what, on the most basic level, do you need to do in order to lose weight or gain weight in some uh, cases that might be what we're interested in. So, what we are going to talk about is calories in versus calories out. And this is really what um, weight balance is all about. So, when we talk about calories in, what we're really talking about is simply the amount of food that we're eating and the amount of alcohol that we're drinking because alcohol has calories as well. So we're looking at carbohydrates, protein, fats, and alcohol. And the sum total of whatever we eat during the day equals our caloric intake. What we expend during the day, the calories that we burn during the day, is a little more complicated. It's made up of a few more different things. So first we're going to talk about the metabolic rate. And the metabolic rate is simply the amount of calories that your body burns just being alive. So if I were to sit in a chair for 24 hours and stay awake, and you were to measure the amount of calories that I would burn, about 70% of my daily caloric um, expenditure is simply from my metabolism, just keeping me alive. So it's a pretty high amount. Second, we're talking about exercise, and exercise is, we know what this is, this is intentional exercise. We're talking about when you actually go out, um, and undertake some physical activity for the purpose of doing some exercise. Running on a treadmill, um, riding a bike, swimming, we call these things intentional exercises. Non-exercise physical activity is the physical activity that we do throughout the day that is not intentional exercise. So getting up and walking to our car, taking out the trash, shoveling snow, cleaning the house, gardening, all those things are um, not, uh, non-exercise physical activity. There are things that result in caloric expenditure, but we're not doing them for the sole purpose of burning calories like we are with exercise. And finally is the thermic effect of food. And the thermic effect of food is the amount of calories that are required in order to metabolize the food that we eat. So, and the amount of calories that we need to metabolize that food depends on what the food actually is. So if we were going to eat pure fat, uh, if we were to eat 100 calories of oil, for example, which is pure fat, it would only require about 8 to 10 calories in order to metabolize that fat and get it absorbed into our body. So the thermic effect of fat is only 8 to 10 percent, whereas the thermic effect of protein is about 30 percent. So if we were to eat 100 calories of protein, we would end up um, burning about 30 calories in that process. So we could see that um, the more protein we eat, the greater amount of calories we're going to expend um, metabolizing it. So really, whether or not we gain weight or whether we lose weight is the difference between our calories in and our calories out. So if we eat 3,000 calories in a day, but we only burn 2,500 calories in a day, then we have a caloric surplus of 500 calories. And one pound of fat is equal to 3,500 calories. So one pound is 3,500 calories. So if we have a 500 calorie surplus every day, in seven days, 3,500 calories, we should gain a pound of fat. Now, this metabolic rate changes depending on how much we eat. So the more we eat, the faster this gets because it's trying to get rid of the food, but ultimately we get to a point where we can't really get rid of it as fast as we're eating it, and weight gain is the end result. So next time what we're going to talk about is how do we measure metabolic rate, how do we change metabolic rate, can we change metabolic rate, we can, and um, we'll talk about the strategies that we can do that so that we maximize um, the amount of calories that we're burning um, from uh, simply just being alive. Thanks. I like this.